Well, hello everyone. This is Jabari Mongoose here, and today I am recording episode one of my new Nuzlocke challenge. It is a Soul Silver, technically a randomizer Nuzlocke challenge, but I changed the randomizer rules a little bit. So this time, only Pokemon that are gifted to me and wild Pokemon that I, that I encounter are completely randomized. Wild Pokemon are also randomized by power level. So uh, in the first few routes, since there's more low level basic Pokemon, that's why I have a chance to encounter with maybe stronger Pokemon if I get a rare encounter. The This, uh, this also means I won't be encountering legendaries and I won't be using legendary Pokemon like I did in my black randomizer. Everything else in the game has not been touched. TMs, items are as they should, and gym leader and trainer Pokemon are the same. So my starter options are Charmander, Abra, and Beldum. And I decided to go for Charmander. One is the least difficult out of the three to use. It won't hurt itself with Be uh, if like Beldum would, and it actually knows moves that can damage things on like Abra. The other reason why I chose it is because it's on the Chikorita slot and on the char uh, and on the Cyndaquil slot is Abra. So my rival is going to have a basically a useless Pokemon for I think just the first battle, maybe for the second battle as well. But I decided to name him Toothless. I know it's not going to be, it's not shiny, so it won't be black when it's a Charizard to fit with why I named it, but it's my go-to name for any Charizard I get. So at this point, I'm just going to let my mom know I'm on an adventure. I mean, I'm 10 years old. It's time for me to live my life now. Live out on my own. We're going to go ahead and take care of this stuff for Professor Elm. I, I skip most things during this tutorial part. I skip, I skip all wild encounters, but I do show off here where... Toothless got to level 7 and learned Ember. Then we're going to be talking to this chipper old man who I wish I have his energy now. Or I hope to be as energized as him when I get that old. Well, since I have some downtime here, we're going with hardcore Nuzlocke rules, so I'm not going any Pokemon I use in the in gym battles will not exceed the level the highest level of the gym leader's ace Pokemon. So right now my level cap is 13 for usable Pokemon. I am not going to use items during battle except for held items those are those are okay to use on that pokemon are currently using basically each location or each uh route catch the first pokemon i encounter unless it's a duplicate i am invoking dupes claws in this run this also counts for gifted pokemon too so if I have an option for a gifted Pokemon or encountering a Pokemon in the wild on a route, uh, I have to pick which one. I can't just take them both, and even for static encounters. This also means that even though there are cities that uh, may not have encounters immediately, I can't, if I get my hands on eggs, which I will in this playthrough, um, I can as long as I hatch them in that town or route that I have not encountered a Pokemon yet, it will be legitimate, to, no matter where I got the egg in the first place. As long as it's hatched in a location I haven't got, caught a Pokemon, 
or failed to capture a Pokemon, it's legitimate. So here we get to name our rival. And, you know, I could come up with something clever, but I'm bad at thinking of stuff on the fly, and I didn't pr prepare that beforehand. So I decided to give him a normal name that I have no relations with whatsoever. His name is Joey. And then here we go and officially take our... Uh, we should go on the challenge, complete the Pokedex, get all your badges, be Elite 4, blah, 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 blah. And then I skip the catching tutorial. I think anyone who stumbles across this would know how to catch a Pokemon. So now we get our first encounter of the game. It's a Silcoon. So there were other Pokemon here on this route, like Diglets and Smeargles, which I would have gladly taken any of those. Silcoon, is, so Beautifly, I'm not upset with. I can use Beautifly for the Sprout Tower. I can use it for the Bug Gym Leader. The problem is I already have a Charmander, which is good for that. So I don't know how much use I'll get out of the Beautifly, but we'll see. Caught it on the second Pokeball. And I decide to name her Silky. The The nickname is inspired from the pet, the little worm pet in Teen Titans that Starfire takes care of. I believe its name was Silky. And so I make a cut. I go and get more Pokeballs, and then I go to Route 46, which was just where I was at before I made the cut, and my encounter is a swine up, and I'm, uh, I like this. So I like Piloswine a lot, I love Mamoswine, so this already feels like a pretty solid uh, Pokemon to catch. So I took way too long for this, but I could not think of a nickname, so I had to look up some stuff. So I looked up the female mammoth from Ice Age 2, and her name was Ellie, and so that's why I'm naming this swine up. Then goes straight to the next route above Cherry Groove City, and I get a Cricket Tot. Not feeling super confident about most of my picks right now. Again, the swine up is good, Charmander is good, Beauty Fly I can work with. Once I can evolve that Silcoon, because all it knows is Harden right now, because I didn't catch it as a Wurmple, Cricket Tot knows Growl and Bide. And the thing is, if I'm going to try to use this Pokemon, I'm going to wait to evolve until it learns Bug Bite, which is 16. But I nickname him Tater, because Tater Tot. And, uh, but honestly, a lonely nature is not terrible for Cricket Tomb because it is a physical attacking Pokemon. So again, things I can work with. And plus Cricket Tomb knows cut, it can learn cut, it can learn rock smash. It's a decent HM slave. So here taking care of the first set of trainers, honestly, because I was able to level up a lot, but again, I'm level cap is 13, so not too worried about one shotting any trainers uh, right now, but I'm going to take this opportunity to switch train Silcoon or Silky. See, the other problem too is because Silcoon only knows Harden, doesn't know Tackle or Poison Sting for just a slight bit of variance. Beautifly is only going to know Absorb when it evolves at level 10, which there's still not a lot I can do with it until I can get it to learn Gust at least. I was looking for the uh, trainer's tip sign, which is right here, because there's a potion in that grass that was hidden. There was also a potion where the riot, where your rival was standing at, um, outside of Professor Elm's laboratory, and I, I get it off screen eventually. But I am excited to try out this randomizer. I think I'll enjoy it a lot. Because Heart Gold and Soul Silver 
it is one of my favorite games and favorite regions to play and i actually years ago did full randomizers for both heart gold and soul silver separately on my soul silver version i made it all the way to beat lance and in my heart gold version which i did sometime after i went all the way to red and no modifications they were just on my ds i was playing whenever i felt like it so I would not be inclined to do another just non-modified run of Harko and Soul Silver. But the thing is, I didn't want to randomize my trainer's Pokemon. I wanted to have a little variety on my end, but still keep the teams and move sets of the special trainers and gym leaders in this game unchanged while following hardcore Nuzlocke rules. And so randomizing only the Pokemon I get felt like a very interesting and I think fun option for me to get some variety. So my encounter for this route is a Smeargle. I believe this was route 31 or 32, but it's 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 right above Mr. Pokemon's house. And I get a Smeargle. The problem is I led with Silcoon, and what I should have done was led with like Charmander or Swinub because Smeargle used up its sketch and now it's struggling. Now granted, I don't have to worry about critting it, but the problem is Smeargle has a, a decently high catch rate for reasons. And I wouldn't mind using a Smeargle. I could, I, I, again, it'd be really unique to try coming up with interesting move sets and see what I can sketch with it but the the other thing is I want to ha I don't want to lose encounters because I want Pokemon for like pivoting to in case I need to sacrifice some mons I'm not going to use but I decided to get this Pokeball down here before I go into the dark cave because at least there's another encounter here that's what you're going to see in this first episode is doing the tutorial and then moving up to Violet City, but I'm going to get as many encounters in this episode that I possibly can before I have to do stuff in the Sprout Tower and fight Faulkner for the first badge. So unfortunately, I have to encounter Bugcatcher Wade. Again, this will just go by really quickly. Swine up can kill the level 2 Mons. But I'll be leaving a full description of my randomized rules as well as my Nuzlocke rules that I'm following for this game. Because I believe to make it a hardcore Nuzlocke rule, it's um, the level cap and level cap for each major gym battle, and the Elite Four and the Champion, and then no use of items in battle. So I get his phone number because Bugcatcher Wade can give me berries and I can, there's a chance. So I'll take any opportunity I can to get extra items here. Okay, so my encounter in the dark cave is a combi. Worst off, it's a male combi, so I won't be getting a Vespic one with this. Mm, not, not, the, not the most ideal, but again, it's switch fodder. I'll take it. It's another body. And I mean, a combi at low level isn't useless once I can teach it, once it learns bug bite, because I can eat berries off of important battles. So there's definitely a use for it, just not for long. And then I get the verse recorder from, oh god, what do they call him in this? It's Ethan, I think. I'm used to playing as the male avatar in this game, so it's usually Lyra. But yeah, we get to Violet City with no deaths, and I'm not updating my team roster because uh, the four these four encounters were the one... These are at least the Pokemon that you see me use in this episode. The remainder of this episode is me getting encounters, so I don't want to place what my team is yet until I 
until you see what all my encounters are, and then I get to look at them between episodes and make a team. So Sprout Tower, I like this encounter. It's a Starly. Um, I can get Intimidate off of it with Staravia, potentially. I think it has a chance to get Rivalry, if I remember, or maybe I'm thinking of Luxray. But anyway, Staraptor is an amazing Pokemon. Bugsy has U-Turn, or gives you the U-Turn TM after beating him, and that's the second badge gym leader, which means I can have a U-Turn user, and if I get Intimidate, it's a U-Turn Intimidate, so I nickname her Freebird. And yeah, just U-Turn Intimidate, that's a solid team member, and Staraptor is an amazing Pokemon. My next encounter here is on Route 32, and it's a Skitty. There's a chance for me to get a... I forget when I can get Moonstones. I think I can get them from the Pokeathlon, and I think I have a chance to get them from Mom when she goes out shopping. But Skitty does have access to Sing, and I think it has Attract. If not, it has Cute Charm. So some more uses out of it, and actually... I'm okay with having it because it's a normal type and it has access to Foresight and Staravia is a normal type, which means I have potential Pokemon to use against Morty in the future because I'll get to it. I'll explain in detail once we get to that episode, but Morty's Gengar is a, is a complete pushover as long as you have normal types. But then I get, this will be my second to last encounter i go into the ruins of the alf complete the first unknown puzzle so i can get my un unknown encounter which is a snover in this game so this was a mistake and fortunately i got off lucky because i stayed in with swine up and then i looked up what snover learned knew and at level five it knows razor leaf so i immediately decide to switch and I believe I switched into Toothless. Okay. But Snover, I'm actually very excited for this because Yes, the hail is bad because any non-ice type Pokemon gets damaged, even my own. So it could potentially put more of my other Pokemon at risk. But I also have a Swine Up, which again is an ice type, but it also has Snow Cloak. So it is it gets increased evasion in the hail. So I got a little bit of synergy here, a little bit of ice type synergy. So that is my last wild encounter for this episode. The last thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to make a cut to it, is I'm going to go to Primo, who's in the Violet City Pokemon Center, and I'm going to figure out the phrase I need to get one of the three eggs from him. And then I'm going to hatch that egg in Cherry Grove City. And it's a camera up. I'm going to leave it here. See you guys in episode two. Bye.